Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of my painting, Butterflies in the Garden. In this video, you'll see me demonstrating the use of powdered black tempera paint and water to create an undertexture for the painting. You'll see a tiger swallowtail, a monarch, and a black swallowtail, and my Rose of Sharon. I hope you enjoy the video and give it a like, and now let's paint. I had seen a yellow tiger swallowtail butterfly in my garden, and I decided I wanted to paint him using powdered pigment as a start. I wet down the paper where I don't want the paint to stick. I sprinkle the paint over the paper, and then I wash everything off with water. When it's dry, I can start to paint using all the shapes I see that were left by the powdered black pigment. In this case, this was black tempera paint powder. You can also use powdered black graphite. First, I decided to start painting in the beautiful rows of Sharon flowers that I saw. And I actually brought one right into my studio so I could copy it and paint directly from what I was looking at. This is a very random way to paint or to start a painting. For some reason, I seem to respond well to the suggestion of the shapes that are left by random actions. They spur my imagination and make for an interesting start in a way that I would not imagine to do if I was just starting on blank paper. Here I've got a very nice butterfly form. So I'm beginning to outline it with my yellowed watercolor and put in the structure of the butterfly. This will be a painting that evolves. As I work, I see shapes, I color them in, I outline them, and I just continue to work. I've outlined more shapes, and I'm beginning to fill in more and more of what I see. I am only working in one a small section, and there's an awful lot more to do here but I'm counting on it to evolve as it's supposed to, and just sort of having fun with this one. For the reference, I am looking at a yellow tiger swallowtail butterfly to get the a structure and the markings correct. I've been fascinated by butterflies my entire life. And I've studied them many times and painted them many times as well. I put the markings in with a lighter color, and once I'm sure they're right, then I will darken them. Moving along, I found another flower, and I'm beginning to outline the petals. I'm working back on the original Rose of Sharon flower and continuing to fill in the petals and the little veins in the individual petals as well as the center part. I'm going back to make the second layer more brilliant and glaze it on.
Then I get a color of paint on my brush that I sort of like, so I repeat it elsewhere in the painting. So I had seen the yellow tiger swallowtail butterfly in my garden, and I knew that I had a purple rose of Sharon blooming. And knowing that those two were beautiful complementary colors, that's why I set up this scheme. To choose additional colors, I frequently will get out my color wheel as a tool and look to see just what works right with the colors that are already down. Sometimes a standard complementary color scheme works really, really well, but sometimes another color just looks better. And I go by what looks right to my eye. Sometimes I make a mistake but frequently it looks, continues to look right once I get it down. And of course you can always try to tweak your mistakes with watercolor. Of course if you tweak again too many times you end up with very muddy looking colors. So it's best to get it right when you can the first time, if possible. My original idea was a flower and a butterfly, but I found the more I worked, the more I needed to include in this overall composition. So I now have two flowers and one butterfly, but I will be adding another butterfly or the suggestion of one. This is not a realistic painting. This is decorative and semi-abstract organic abstract with definitely recognizable objects but not realistically rendered. It's almost like filling in a coloring book drawing but you're the one making the drawing. And using the shapes that you poured from the powdered tempera paint to fill in adds a nice overall drawing aspect to this type of painting. The butterfly is getting some more dominant markings at this point. And I continue to tweak the original starting subjects, even as I add more and more work to the background and surrounding objects. I am brightening the color on the butterfly. I'm also adding some of the physical anatomy of the body of the butterfly. Even though this is not a realistic painting, I did feel that I needed some realism in the body. I'm detailing the markings on the lower wing, including the long tail that this type of butterfly has. I think that this kind of tail makes a butterfly look even more beautiful. I'm adding some darks here and there throughout the painting to mirror the markings on the dark parts of the butterfly. I'm also suggesting some butterfly markings on the lower part of an abstract shape. And I still have to decide what to do with the rest of the 
patterns and surrounding area in the background. I'm trailing a leafy vine going through the painting in green. Darkening the patterns on my butterfly some more as well. And I've decided to make another butterfly or a wing of a butterfly into this obviously butterfly wing shape that was just beneath the first one. I decided on a monarch butterfly. They have a nice orangey brown color and very distinctive markings. And I thought this might add in a beautiful way to the composition. So I paint in the coloring and I work on the markings. I have to work with what I've actually got on the paper. I cannot make pure whites again with this type of a setup approach. The only whites that remained pure and untouched on this whole painting were the places where I added water before I put the black powder tempera on top. The powder tempera will not stick on wet areas but it will stick everywhere else and leave this light gray patterny form that's so interesting to work with for me. I go around the paper and continue to add darks, accents, and try to tie the painting together as I go with all these various patterns and colors. I go back around the painting and continue to develop new color areas, stems, leaves, random colorful forms trailing in a pretty and organic flowery or butterfly wing type of way. It's a general feeling I'm going for. Patterns and colored areas tied together. Each little area that I paint in has to relate to what's around it in color and form in order to not look like some random hodgepodge but more like an organic abstract that evolves. One more wing form is now evolving. I'm painting in the colors, some of the markings of a black swallowtail butterfly. So my painting has developed as I've worked from having the idea of one tiger swallowtail 
and one purple rose of Sharon to being a garden full of butterflies, full of floral forms. And here I've just decided to break it up a little bit with a blur of color going through the butterfly and part of the flower. So I'd lifted some color there by using a damp brush and a paper towel to blot. Detailing the final butterfly wing. And once that's done, I'm going to have to tie that into the background and what's surrounding it as well. I do frequently stop to give consideration as to where I should go next, or what I feel challenged to paint, what area, and just how to do it. So I've decided to come in with some yellow and some golden ochre colors, and a pattern around the black swallowtail butterfly. I'm using the directional lines that were already established and continuing them on down, although I had broken them up with a diagonal leaf going through. Glazing and adding more color in some other areas as well. And I will continue to do that all throughout my painting of this particular subject. I'm continuing to the outer areas around the main subject matter. I'm working off of the shapes and colors and forms that were already painted and trying to continue them in a logical way to make the pattern evolve ever outward I'm also trying to use the markings that were left by random from the black powdered pigment that set this whole thing up in the first place. Again, when I get a color I like on my brush, I see if it will look good anywhere else. Since I already have the paint on my brush, I might as well use it up. And I'm continuing to add strong darks as a foil to all the colorful light and pastel areas. And to continue the dark markings on the butterfly wings, into other areas of the painting to incorporate the patterns and to make everything tie together. You know, I'm not an abstract painter, so to speak, but in this, using this technique does allow me to, to feature some abstract concepts in my paintings. If I just go with what was established, it seems to really work for me. And now I'm getting to the point where it's starting to come together. Everything's tying, and I'm pulling in the outer areas with the colors and the patterns, and it's all becoming harmonious to my eye. This took a lot of work, but it was really fun.
In some areas, I will leave the original pigmentation left by the black powdered tempera paint, and I won't paint on it at all. I find it to be an interesting, a neutral color, and in some areas it just looks right left alone. It does tend to pattern in a very organic way. Darkening and tweaking at this point, trying to make everything harmonious. I'm signing my name and calling it. I hope you enjoyed my video of mixed media and watercolor painting, Butterflies in the Garden. I hope that you'll subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. There are links to the products I use in the description box below, along with links to my Facebook art page, my blog, and my product gallery. As always, your comments are very welcome. See you next painting.